probably one of the most important steps in your whole routine if you have rosacea, and that's your sunscreen step because we know that UV worsens rosacea. The first one is actually a color correcting treatment. It's green. As you rub it in, it becomes more beige colored. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Joyce Park, board certified dermatologist, and today we're going to talk about rosacea. What is it? Who gets it? Why do we get it? And I'm gonna build a full AM and PM rosacea-friendly skincare routine for you. Now, this is a topic that's really personal for me because I have suffered from rosacea for a long time. And so has my dad, actually. And he never saw a dermatologist in all his years of suffering with it. And he used to get the really severe pustular, papulopustular kind, where he would get acne breakouts all over his nose. And lucky for me, I inherited it. So this is something I personally have struggled with. I see a lot of patients with it. And so I feel like I can really give you a good idea of how I managed to finally get my rosacea under control and also give you a couple tips on what I as a dermatologist can prescribe to use as part of your skincare routine, along with some recommendations for skincare products that you can get over the counter. So a lot to unpack here. And I know I'm a day late. I was meaning to film this for April, which is Rosacea Awareness Month, but you know, it's May, better late than never. So here we go. So first things first, what the heck? is rosacea. So rosacea is a very common skincare condition. In fact, over 14 million Americans have rosacea. It's more common in people between the ages of 30 to 50 and more common in fair or light-skinned individuals. Now that's not to say that younger people can't get it or people of darker skin tones can't get it. They can, but this is the demographic that most typically gets rosacea. Now the cause of it is a little bit more uncertain. We definitely know that it is genetic. As I already shared, my dad has rosacea, I have rosacea. Hopefully my son does not have rosacea, but I guess we'll see. Secondly, we know that there is a strong environmental component to it. We know there are certain things in your environment that really trigger and flare your rosacea. People might have different triggers, and this is something I always talk to my patients about. You wanna figure out what is your trigger and try to minimize exposure to that. So the common triggers are alcohol, caffeine, stress, strong emotions, whether that's extreme anger or extreme happiness, sunlight exposure, extreme heat, spicy food, and hot foods. Now, I just listed a whole bunch of things some of those might trigger your rosacea and some of those might not. For me personally, I have like a double whammy with alcohol. I have Asian glow and I have rosacea. So it's like my face lights up like a, I don't know, like a Christmas tree. I also get triggered by exercise and by hot weather. I get really, really, really flushed. So those are my triggers. Now people are always saying, if I have rosacea, does it mean I can't enjoy any of these things that I like, like coffee, tea, alcohol? No, I'm not saying that. I never say that. I'm just saying enjoy in moderation and if you happen to be having a rosacea flare, maybe cut down on those triggers. We also think that the immune system may have something to do with rosacea, meaning people with rosacea tend to have a more active immune system where they mount an immune response and get inflammation to little things like the triggers we talked about, but also to something else called the demodex mite. Now the demodex mite is something harmless. It lives on all of our skin, loves to live on around our nose and our cheek area, which is where rosacea tends to flare. But rosacea patients tend to get more of an active immune response to demodex mites. So that's why in some of the treatments I'll talk about later, some of those ingredients are actually targeted anti-mite treatment. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So what exactly does rosacea look like? There's four main types of rosacea. Each of these four types looks slightly different and may need different types of treatments. First up, we have erythematotelangiectatic rosacea. That is a mouthful. Had to practice that a few times. This type is characterized by what you think of as classic rosacea. You got the flushing of the cheek, bright red cheeks, nose area, chin area, and you can also get those very visible red squiggly blood vessels. Next is papulopustular rosacea. And this is sometimes misdiagnosed as acne because it can look quite similar. This can look like pus-filled bumps, like whiteheads, pustules, but it can also look like cysts, the kind that you get on your chin around your period, like hormonal acne. These can appear anywhere on your cheeks, your nose, your chin. People can even break out on other parts of their body too. And it is usually a accompanied by redness as well. The third type is called Phimidus rosacea. And this one you may not have heard of, but you'll probably recognize if you see it. This type of rosacea affects the nose and it results in a thickened kind of bumpy and lumpy appearance of the nose over time. The nose actually changes shape. It looks more bulbous and it basically gets 
gets reshaped by this chronic inflammation and chronic untreated rosacea. Lastly, number four, there's ocular rosacea, which comes along with people who have other types of rosacea. And it manifests as kind of dry, gritty, itchy, sensitive eyes. Your eyes can feel dry. They can just feel irritated. A lot of my patients will tell me it's like I have sand in my eye or something in my eye, like a particle or something. I just want to rub it and it's very itchy. That one is also something that we can treat and one that I often refer to my optometry or ophthalmology colleagues. Now, the type of rosacea that you have definitely will influence the type of treatment. For example, if you have just the redness and the visible veins, then that can be treated topically or with laser. If you have a lot of breakouts, like in papulopustular rosacea, you might need a short course of oral antibiotics, something like doxycycline. If you have vimidus rosacea, and if it's severe, if you already have complete change of the architecture of your nose and the anatomy, the physiologic appearance of your nose, then you might need like laser resurfacing or something to reshape the appearance of your nose. And lastly, if you have ocular rosacea, then your optometrist or your ophthalmologist may actually prescribe you some steroid eye drops. So the cause really influences the treatment. So it's important to know which type you have. One other treatment we have at our disposal for rosacea that's actually really effective are light and laser therapies. There's two recommendations that I have. There's intense pulsed light and then there's a vascular laser like a pulse dye laser. So intense pulse light is actually not a laser because it's not a single wavelength. It is a spectrum of wavelengths because it's a, it's a light, intense pulsed light. And what it's good for is for people with some light brown spots and some red spots. So it's more surface level. It can hit different colors and correct different colors and different types of imperfections, but it's not going to be as powerful. So I have had IPL done on me twice and the downtime is really minimal. I had some little coffee ground specks on my face for maybe three days. And then after that, it peeled off and it looked fine. I did not appreciate a huge improvement in my redness. So I will say that, but I think it is effective, especially if you have repeat treatments and it can help with brown spots and red spots at the same time. The other laser that is really great for rosacea that I have done to tons of patients and have also done on myself many times is the pulse dye laser. So the pulse dye laser is our preferred laser for vascular lesions, including rosacea. This is a 595 nanometer wavelength laser and it basically will target just red colors. So this is what I use for red stretch marks, red spots and rosacea, and it's really good at addressing those juicy plump veins that can become very dilated and noticeable in rosacea patients. It usually takes a few sessions. I usually say you'll have to do, depending on the amount of redness you have, anywhere between three to six sessions, usually not covered by insurance. And the downtime is not bad. I mean, you will look pretty black and blue. You'll look a little bruised for the first day or two. So that's why I have my patients usually do it on Friday so you have the weekend to recover. So you will be a little black and bruised, but the more black and bruised you are, that means the more powerful of a treatment it was and the more effective it's going to be. All right, so we're gonna go into the next part of this video, which is going over an AM routine for rosacea and a PM routine for rosacea. So let's just dive right into the AM routine. The most important part of this routine is going to be the sun protection because like I mentioned, rosacea flares when you are exposed to UV radiation, when you're exposed to the sun. And and I always tell my patients, the more rosacea flares, the more you flush, the more dilated those vessels become, and the more likely that these changes are not just gonna be temporary, they're marching towards becoming permanent. So it is really important to treat these rosacea symptoms early on and get it under control before the symptoms start to become more permanent. So in the morning, I typically do an optional cleanse. You can cleanse if you want to, but you don't have to. I like to recommend a sulfur-based cleanser for my patients with rosacea. I'll put a couple of recommendations in the caption below, or I usually will prescribe to my patients a sulfur-based cleanser. And this is usually covered by insurance. After the sulfur-based cleanser, I will usually have my patients use some type of prescription. I am big on custom compounding. I like to create prescriptions for my patients tailored very much and personalized for their needs. So for rosacea, I like to create a blend of azelaic acid at percentages higher than what you can get over the counter, metronidazole, which is an antimicrobial agent, and ivermectin, which is an anti-mite 
agent, which is actually really to target the demodex mites on your face. In these preparations, I have also asked pharmacists to sometimes add in a little bit of oxymetazolone or bromonidine. These are both alpha adrenergic receptor agonists, meaning they help to clamp down or vasoconstrict. We know that in rosacea, you have a problem with persistent vessel dilation, leading to that flushing and really visible vessels on the skin. And so what these agonists do is they will help clamp down those blood vessels, which then reduces flushing. However, in both of these, I have found that the effects tend to be temporary. They work well, but it's temporary and a small percentage of people can experience rebound flushing after taking the medication. So they're not really my favorite. I tend to rely more on the combinations that I listed before, which is the metronidazole, the ivermectin, and the azelaic acid. So after applying the medication, then I usually will have my patients apply some sort of antioxidant. This one is my antioxidant of choice. It is the Skin Better Alto Advanced Defense and Repair Serum. I've talked about this one a whole lot, but it has tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate vitamin C, which is very stable. It comes in this airless pump. So you just pump it out when you wanna use it so you're not exposing the whole bottle to air and light and different temperatures each time. It keeps really well and it also has this really unique blend of antioxidants, I think 17 antioxidants, as well as this new Allo PQQ technology. So this is just one of my favorites and I will link this below. It's also really great for sensitive skin and a lot of individuals with rosacea do have sensitive skin and I fall into that category as well. And I found that the THD ascorbate based vitamin C's are less irritating than the L-ascorbic acid ones. So I like recommending this for all my sensitive skinned or rosacea patients. Next is an extremely important step, probably one of the most important steps in your whole routine if you have rosacea, and that's your sunscreen step because we know that UV worsens rosacea without a doubt, it flares it. And the more it flares, the worse it gets. So I'm gonna go over three options with you today. Now, I do like to recommend mineral sunscreens for rosacea patients because of that slightly increased risk for sensitivity with chemical sunscreen ingredients. Now, if you've been following me for a while or if you've heard me talk about sunscreens before, you'll know I love my chemical sunscreens, but I'm saying for rosacea skinned or sensitive skinned patients, the mineral ones might be a slightly better option. So I'm going to go over three. The first one is actually Actually a color correcting treatment. So I've talked about this one before. This is the Dr. Jart Sycopare Tiger Grass Color Correcting Treatment. I like this one as kind of like a moisturizer slash SPF, but I would use SPF on its own before this as well, because I just don't think you'd be using enough of this to get the full SPF benefit. It is quite thick. It comes as a zinc oxide 5.7%, titanium dioxide 4.7%. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like today because I didn't show you last time and I regret it. So it comes with this little spatula, which you should always use because you don't want to be sticking your dirty fingers in there. And you should always keep this little cap too, because it just helps to prevent more things from going inside. It's green. It is green, green, green. And the centella or the Sycopare is actually an anti-inflammatory agent that we see a lot in Asian beauty. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this here and show you how this looks on my hand here. As you rub it in, it becomes more beige colored. A little bit goes a long way and it actually it can take a while to rub in. So there you see, it rubs in, looks really great. It definitely gives it a little bit of coverage. If you compare my hands, you could see that this side looks a little bit more yellowish, I guess, more beige-ish because it's been covered and this side is my natural color. So you can see one side, the redness is gone. Okay, the next sunscreen is the Color Science Unforgettable Total Protection Face Shield Flex. I've been a fan of Color Science ever since I was a resident. It's just such an elegant, beautiful formula. The Flex is a really cool option where the sunscreen comes out a little bit grayish, but as you rub, it releases these kind of color correcting pigments then will match to your skin tone. So it's really cool. This is one of my mom's favorite sunscreens that I've ever gifted her. It comes out really creamy, it's hydrating, it's smooth and beautiful. I just really love it and it's 100% mineral. The third one is a classic that I've talked about often. This is the Elta MD. It's actually not the UV elements that I'm recommending for rosacea, but this is just the one that I have up here. The one I recommend for rosacea and acne is the Elta MD UV Clear because it contains niacinamide. It also contains tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and it has some sodium hyaluronate as well, which helps to hydrate. Now, in this formulation, it's most 
mostly zinc oxide with a little touch of octinoxate. So I know I mentioned, you know, I like my mineral sunscreens for my rosacea and sensitive skinned individuals. However, this one I have not had an issue with, my patients have not had an issue with. So if you want a purely mineral sunscreen, you can try the Color Science one. But if you are open to this Elta one, it has a slight bit of octinoxate, but it works really, really well too. I have not seen any issues with breakouts or sensitivities from it. And it just has a very, very wonderful finish. Like when I put on the Elta MD, it has enough tint and coverage that I no longer need to wear foundation. It's able to kind of cover up and gloss over all my blemishes and my freckles. And it is very hydrating. So it's a really wonderful, lightweight, breathable sunscreen that I just really love. Then after you do your sunscreen, you can do your makeup and be on your merry way. And don't forget to reapply your sunscreen every two hours. If you're sitting indoors, but next to a big window like I am all the time, then you do also need to reapply. Let's hop into the PM skincare routine. I usually will recommend starting off with a gentle cleanser. So you do your sulfur cleanser in the morning and then you use a gentle cleanser in the evening. This is my favorite gentle cleanser for sensitive skin, rosacea skinned individuals. This is the La Roche-Posay Tolerian Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. This also contains ceramides and niacinamide. Niacinamide, antioxidant, ceramides is kind of like the mortar to your skin cells, which are the bricks. It's like the glue holding your skin cells together. This is very hydrating and honestly just really, really gentle. I find it very non-irritating and it does a good job of removing dirt, oil, impurities. I will say though, if I am wearing a lot of makeup that day, I'll start with an oil-based cleanser first. I find that this by itself does not quite do the job in getting off all the foundation and the mascara. After the cleanser, then I would go ahead and put on usually a prescription strength product. So either that special compounding medicine that I give to my rosacea patients or using a tretinoin. The tretinoin that I recommend hands down universally for all my rosacea patients is the Skin Better Alpha Red. And that's because it's gentle enough for my rosacea patients. A lot of my patients with rosacea and myself included cannot tolerate tretinoin, prescription strength tretinoin. And believe me, I have tried. Like when I was in New York, when I was a resident, I was like, I need to get on tret. I'm telling all my patients to do it. I got to do it too. I suffered through two plus months of looking like a lizard or like a snake that was shedding its skin off. And even my patients and co-residents would ask me, what is wrong with your skin? It was really embarrassing to say the least. It caused me a lot of burning, irritation, and the most I could ever get to use it was like one night a week. So when I found the Skin Better Alpha Ret, which is a retinoid that's conjugated with a lactic acid and it also has glycolic acid in it, I was overjoyed because it is the only retinoid I've ever found that gives me zero irritation. All my patients who have sensitive skin try this one at my recommendation and they love it. So that's the one I would recommend. If you find though that you cannot tolerate retinoid if you want to try your retinol product, if you want to try your Bacuchiol product, if you want to use your exfoliating peel pads, go for it. This step is where I would put the retinoid or retinol or your peel pads. And I just want to stress again, do not over exfoliate your skin, especially if you have rosacea or sensitive skin. You only want to be doing one exfoliant per night. So I would not be trying to put acids and retinoid and all these exfoliating agents in your routine at the same time. Lastly, you have your moisture step. I'm not really picky on moisturizers for rosacea prone skin. I think it's great just to choose a moisturizer that's non-irritating, one that won't clog your pores, especially if you have the papulopustular rosacea type and one that you like. Some of my favorite moisturizers for rosacea patients are the Neutrogena Hydro Boost, the CeraVe PM Facial Lotion, and personally I've been really enjoying using the Dr. Jart Overnight Cream as well as the Tatcha Indigo Repair Cream or the Tatcha Watery Cream. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was kind of a big overview of rosacea, what it is, all the different types, medical treatments that I recommend, and then also a full AM and PM skincare routine. Please let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you think of this video below. Please, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I do have a lot of stuff coming out for you soon and I'm always taking topic recommendations. So if you want me to address a topic in the upcoming videos, drop that below. Until next time.